Hey, it's Lucy. The title says it all. Exactly one year ago, my very first paper submission was rejected and I was devastated. So it was my master's dissertation, cut down from 10,000 words to 3,000, and I'd spent the last month before my PhD began working solidly on this thing. So when I got the rejection letter, I felt completely disheartened, humiliated, and like, if what I thought was such quality science was so wrong, what was I doing becoming a researcher? But when I read the reviews, I agreed with them. And looking back now, there are several large and retrospectively obvious mistakes that I made that I'd know to avoid in future. So here are three of them, and bear in mind some of these will be painful for me to admit. Number one, I submitted to a stupidly prestigious journal. This was a bad move for several reasons, most crucially because they're super competitive. So even if you do have textbook rewriting stuff, you're probably gonna get rejected. And if you get rejected from a prestigious short format journal, that makes submitting elsewhere about 5,000 words harder. You'll have to rewrite the whole thing to fit the regular journal format, which tends to be a lot longer and include a lot more depth. Why did I submit to a short format journal? I had encouragement from my professors, and I suppose I got excited, but I should have thought it through. Number two, I presented extraordinary claims without extraordinary evidence. Thank you Carl Sagan for the definitive quote to live by as a scientist. My data was all very qualitative. I was interpreting the surface of Mars saying it looked like one thing when other people had said it looked like another, and that's very subjective. The claims I was making really required way more work before they could support themselves, like a full on hydrostatic model of the Martian crust, uh, which I'm several physics degrees short of ever making. I wouldn't have been proud if this paper got published because I knew in my heart it needed more work and that I didn't have time to do that. So I rushed it out and I shouldn't have. Number three, I chose reviewers who had a vested interest against my hypothesis. This sounds like a stupid mistake, but it was a tricky one because while my work didn't agree with theirs entirely, it did build directly off it. I needed their expertise if it was to be thoroughly reviewed, but I did risk being torn to shreds for personal reasons, which I was. I couldn't get across the full complexity of their model in my short paper. They thought I was mis-selling it and that I didn't understand it. Ah. Oh. Which understandably got their backup. Um, might explain why they were overly destructive towards every aspect of my hypothesis. He had a lot of really useful comments, but there's constructive criticism and then there's just downright excoriation. Next time I will better explain myself and choose reviewers who are more impartial. And that was that. When the rejection letter came, I told myself enough was enough. I had to focus on my PhD now and leave it. Uh, managed about six months before I could bear it no longer. 5,000 words and one month of my spare time later, I had a shiny new manuscript prepared and I sent it off to a journal that funnily enough was once edited by Carl Sagan himself. I'd cut out the grandiose hydrostatic model bits, I'd made it into a very localized study, and I expect if it does get accepted, it'll only be read by a handful of people. And I don't care. Whatever happens, I'm really proud of myself and who cares what journal it goes in? At this stage of my career, just having a paper out is really cool. To summarize, aim for a realistic journal, make sure you've got enough data for a strong case, choose reviewers who will be impartial, and if you do get rejected, just get up and try it again. I've given you three reasons why my paper was rejected, but rewriting and resubmitting it is the only chance I have at changing that. Things cross for take two of my paper, and if you're writing yourself, then I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you for watching the PH Diaries, and take care.